Taisha Casey. Kaylin Gillum. Delvon Cooper. Simi Vick. Justice Thomas Jackson. Kinsey Beatles. Shannon Shelton. Shay Naya Wallace. Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia Urban Archaeology Corps. Yeah. Urban Archaeology Corps. Yeah. Urban Archaeology Corps. Well, today we're excavating Shimborazo Park. I didn't know anything about this location really until I started doing this. Um, this is Shimborazo Park. Um, Shimborazo Hill probably uh, was once inhabited by Indians or Native Americans due to um, the hill and how high it is and how close it is to the river. Was a hospital for the war the Chimborazo Hospital, one of the largest in the, the South for the Confederate Army. The hospital that was here, it was more for like, not so much wounds, but more for people who were like diseased from you know, close quarters during the war. Um, soldiers, um, nurses that worked in the hospital, it was some African American. Some people of color did work here. And um, after the Civil War ended and slaves were freed, it served as a town for freedmen. Freed slaves who were just looking for shelter and a place to live and just community and a place to go because they had nowhere to go. And this is where they settled at because it was a bunch of empty buildings from the Civil War that no one had used for. It served the freedmen as a source of um, housing and then also education opportunities opened up here. So it was pretty much a hub for African Americans during that time period. They made a school, Shambraza School, and people from ages like four or to like 30 were attending school here to just get an education which they were denied when they were enslaved. At first this area was considered to be part of Henrico, but um, eventually the, the city of Richmond took it over and they converted it into a, a city park. Okay. And um, they put a weather station right there for the city too. And now it's currently a national park. In a lot of cases, what um, Reconstruction and Emancipation Era archaeology is finding is that black communities came together, were incredibly self-reliant and self-sufficient, were doing a lot of their own um, hunting and um, um, farming and um, creating businesses. Striving for education and um, they had their own militia and were protecting themselves against um, the prejudice that they were going through at that time. I think that this is a really good opportunity to explore history that you would never have thought about in the first place. And if you're not so much of an oral learner and a lot of history that they teach in school, it's just kind of like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you this lecture, this is what we're going to do. This is more of a hands-on exploration of history itself. So you get to find what it is that the history is physically and then interpret that yourself. And I think that that's just like a different a different way to go through the process and so you may not find history interesting if someone's just lecturing it to you but if you were part of the discovery of it yourself that's a different aspect to consider. There's a lot of things that you wouldn't know about this um, location that can be um, physically represented by the artifacts that we may discover. You're um, excavating a certain site you have to take their culture into mind like the certain things they did every day, the certain things they ate, the way they dressed. I found something. Oh my goodness. I'm screening, looking for um, artifacts that's in the dirt that we can't see. <laughs> Put it on the screen like that. You usually shake it like this, but I'm sitting down. So I just go like this until you find like an artifact. 
Um, we found a lot of glass, a lot of brick. Some mortar and some burnt wood from we don't know when yet. Well, the glass is from a bottle because of the curve on it. Okay. And the metal, we're not sure because of how rusted it is. Come out of the ground, you put them in the bag, you clean them, then you label them, then you catalog them. <laughs> so if you find a certain artifact that has anything to do with that culture, you can be like, oh, well, I know they like to eat this, so this could be their eating habits, or I knew they like to wear this, so this could be clothing. The more often people see archaeologists do their, doing their work in public, the more they think about on their own sites what could be under the ground. And um, sometimes that just reminds people that even if um, a long time has passed since a particular event that they might be interested in, um, that it's important that we, um, we're good stewards. It's just a place to reflect and think about the history here but also reflect on what we can do better in the future to better get along and coexist. And it's important to like teach future generations so we don't, we don't lose that, so we don't lose the history. As far as the, the history here, I feel a connection with that because I, I am African American and I mean, I, I'm not sure, like maybe one of the freedmen here could have been some of my ancestors, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But it's just the fact of, of learning about, you know, my, my, the history of my people, of my race. And I just found it pretty cool because before this summer, I, I did not know about the significance of this hill at all. And I, I'm really fascinated now. And I, I actually like learning, you know, things like this. I knew it was a park. I didn't know it was a hospital or it was a um, Freeman town. I've come here to like walk dogs and like do various things, but I didn't know there was a deeper history to it. The history of Richmond is important to me, so I feel like it would be important to a lot of other people too. It's a great learning experience, and it's fine. It's a it's fine. You're outdoors, especially if you don't really do a lot, like at home. You can be doing something. You learn a lot, and plus, like we give to the community too. We make it a better place and stuff. But it is fun. You do, you do do something interesting for the whole summer, and. You to learn something that most people probably haven't learned yet about that um, area. It's an honor to be a part of this experience. Just trying something new is always for the best because last year the program really helped me change and become more outgoing and more outspoken. So it really helped me uh, get out there in the world. You know, before last year, I didn't really know much about the National Park Service or anything, and uh, last year opened my eyes to it, and I just, I love working with the National Park Service, and being able to do that again is why I came back, and also I like, I like doing archaeology, because it's pretty neat, you know, uncovering things that, you know, people have never seen before, no one else has found, and just being able to, you know, help tell someone's history and shine light on things and have people have a better understanding and appreciation for the neighborhoods like Churchill, and um, I just, I just like that. You know, before I got involved with NPS, I didn't really think I'd be that interested in it, but once I got introduced to it and had the opportunity to be a part of it, it really caught my interest. And um, it's just the connections, the friendships you make with the park rangers, the staff from Groundwork, um, your fellow interns, it's, it's just really great. And you have so many great experiences. You know, you get to travel to other national parks and learn things about your area that you never knew before. I want to come back again to continue with the work I did last year yeah. and to be able to um, provide maybe guidance for the newer students. I'm not like just some person here, like I have made a contribution and I am making a contribution and like that's what I want to do in life, so good, <laughs> good start. <That's> <laughs> National Park <laughs> Service <laughs> Urban <laughs> Archaeology <laughs> Corps. <laughs> 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 Whoa. 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 Whoa.